nice to have you here in the studio. Well, hello, it's Chuck again, and I'm happy to be here. I'm glad you joined me. We're going to do a few little quick uh, paintings for you. I want to show you how I start and how I feel and, and uh, what I'm going to do. It's rather uh, quick and loose, and that's how I feel today. Quick, loose, and uh, we want a little bit of modified color. We're not going to use an awful lot of colors, but we're going to work on the, on the cool side. And this is what I want. I'll show you my little sketch here of how I feel. Not what I'm looking at, but how I feel. And, and this is a subject I saw probably a hundred times. It's in an old park. Been around. Anybody know what Roger Williams Park is up in Rhode Island? Well, that's where this is. And when it snowed, it really snowed. And we had a little creek that came down and came this way and so on. And I liked it. I liked it. And when the snow fell, fresh snow, this is what I saw. I just, in my mind, I saw these shapes. I'm interested only in shapes right now, shapes and color. I want to know how they affect each other. And so that's what I'm concerned about. And if you'll just bear with me, I'll call out what I'm using and I'll call out the brush I'm using. Uh, but this is, this is my sketch. You see it? Isn't it quite something? I might even stop there. Looks pretty good. Anyway, here we go. You ready? Now, we keep that right there. I'm going to use some blues. I'm going to use the blue side of the palette. I'm going to use a muslin brush. This is a soft hair brush. I've had it for I don't know how long, 10, 15 years. It's been around since Tony brought them out. And uh, actually, it's an old sign painter's brush. Uh, I used to use these when I was painting signs years ago. And I'm washing on a background. I'm just putting it on wet. I'm just getting the feeling. I'm feeling the looseness in the, the, uh, the, uh, w w what I felt when I was at this site, when I saw this site, I was captivated by the, the blues and the snow and the coldness. And I don't know, I, I just liked it. So I'm, I'm going to see if I can't reproduce that. So check with the, the sketch. I'm going to stay pretty close to that. You can see it. There it is right there. And uh, I've laid this on very, very, very uh, loosely in a lot of water because I've diffused the color. I'm using some Lucas uh, turquoise here. And uh, that gives me a nice fresh turquoise, nice fresh color. I'm going to go right into that with a little cobalt blue and build this up. Now, see, that's enough right there. I don't want to put too much on right now. No detail. There's no detail in this at all. And here we go. Pick it up off the palette. You can see my palette over there. I've got all the colors that I need in case I want to use another color. I've got it over there. I don't want to go hunting in my box for it. I've got it right here. So I'm going to be painting all day, and that's why I put all that color out, because I'm going to use it. Now, notice how everything is kind of diffusing and kind of working together, and that's the feeling I want right now. I want that feeling. That's that cobalt blue, and I want that feeling. Cobalt blue over a turquoise, blue turquoise. Yes, there's such a thing as a green turquoise. Yes, there is. Now, you know that a, a damp brush will pick up so that won't run. See, can't, water can't go un, uh, without, uh, watercolor can't travel unless there's water to, to make it move. So if you've got a dry piece of paper down here, it isn't going to go anywhere. Now, if it beads up, if it's tilted like this, um, that's a different story. It's going to 
it's going to, more water you put on it, and actually it's going to, you can see it beating up down there, but nothing to get worried about. And <clears throat> if I am, I've got the tissue right there, and I can just pick that right up. I don't want this line to be too flat, and I know that this is just a, a beginning. So I'm going to go down here and put this creek in. See this creek on the bottom here? Well, we're going to put that in. I'm just going to put that. And I like that. I like that. There we go. Um, I see this. I could go to a hair dryer and, uh, and dry that off, but I don't know. I think I'll go with a little, one more color, one more blue. And this will be ultramarine light, ultramarine blue light. And I'm just going to drop it in. Maybe I'll get a little higher up in here, and maybe I will get a, a little bit more definition, a little bit more weight on the bottom of these shapes. And remember, I'm only, I'm only thinking about shapes. That's all I'm thinking about, shapes and color and their relationship to one another. Okay? No... There's really no definition at all. But you're beginning to see this. Take a little shape here. All with this little one-inch muslin brush. This is not the only brush I use, but believe me, it's a good one. No detail yet. Okay, now let's take a look and see what, let's get something, that's it, okay, we're all right, I'm happy with that, I'm happy with this too. Okay, now, whoop, I'm in the wrong bucket, you gotta get in the right bucket, Chuck. Blotter, water, palette, all right next to me. I don't have to reach for anything, I don't have to go hunting for anything, it's all right there, if you're gonna paint with this kind of enthusiasm and this kind of speed and this intensity, have everything ready for you. Have everything right there ready. And, and, and you'll find that everything will work out better. I'm using um, uh, Fabriano Artistico. Um, it's an old concern, it's an old company. And um, it's been around for quite a while. So I like that paper. Um, Osh is good paper, and um, several others, Kilimanjaro is good paper, and Aquarelle is good paper. But uh, now I'm seeing that it won't dry as quickly as I want it to, so I'm going to put more, uh, I'm going to have more pigment than water. The water is already in the paper, and I know that if I go in there with more pigment, even now, it's going to pick up some water. So right now I'm going to just put most, most of all pigment. You can see if I squeeze that brush, there's no water coming out of it. So what is it? There's a damp brush and there's pigment on it. So I'm able to uh, get some sort of definition Here we go. See, now now you're beginning to see a few things. And I don't want to get too defined here. I don't want to get too, too defined. So I'm just going to run these things together so I can maintain the shape that I want. Maybe leave a little. See how, how this runs and this didn't because I have more pigment on the brush than water. Here I've got some water and some pigment. So you've got to know where the water is. 
Figure out where the water is. It can only be in one of three places. In your brush, on the paper, or in the bucket. So be careful. That's a, that's a good thing to know. Let's put a little one right in here. I live in North Carolina, as you know, but we have uh, plenty of spruce and pine trees down here. Well, we have plenty of, of those up in Rhode Island where I came from. Uh, I don't know if the state is still there. Uh, they might have sold it, but, uh, you know, it was a good state. It was a little state, a little small state. You could cover the whole state in about 15 minutes. Anyway, let's not get into that. We don't need that. And I'm going to put a couple of uh, verticals in there. I won't do that too much now. I still don't want too much detail, just, just enough. Okay? And I'm going to show you another way to do that. I'm going to take this larger brush out that I was using earlier, put some, um, some uh, ultramarine light, and I'll just wash that, push, push that right on. Same way, take the, take the water out of it. You can see you get more bounce for your buck, more pigment, less water. Wherever I put water, it's going to diffuse the pigment, okay? Okay, and uh, so you can see, I probably arrived at where I wanted to be with this bigger brush um, quicker than I did with the smaller one. The smaller the brush, the more picky you get. You know, and I know some of you like to be picky. I used to be picky. I used to be very picky. And uh, I'm not picky anymore. When you get to my age, you're not picky. You don't have time to be picky. Okay? And we're going to darken that up just a little bit, a little bit later. All right, that looks like it's turning the corner. Okay, all right, I like what we're doing so far. I'm going to take a damp brush, or almost a thirsty brush, so you can't get any water out of that. I can't get any water out of that. So I'm going to take a kind of a semi-damp brush and just move the edges around, cut those edges off and bring them up. All right. 